Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who host Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at smashitderby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at stirringdirtracing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now your host, Chris Marquardt. Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this edition of Crash Course number 252 on deck. Got a loaded one tonight for you. We're going to be welcoming Teddy Papadopoulos to the show and also going to be catching up with Jacob Prusman after he won on the qualifying bracket out at Blizzard Bash. Teddy, of course, uh, getting a lot of support from the Demolition Derby community as a whole as, uh, as his son Corbin works through uh, a recent diagnosis with diabetes and and what a response was given to him and his family out there in Topeka of course Teddy uh, a, a staple out there it does it's just not Topeka without Teddy with the way that he drives and, and earning that Mad Dog award a couple years ago is still a thing that people talk about on a regular basis um, so uh, without any further ado I, I guess it's probably a, a pretty ap- appropriate time to bring Teddy on he's waiting in the wings Teddy man how are you that's that's great. Good to have you on the show tonight. Uh, always good to catch up with you. So tell me tell me a little bit more about. Um, well, first first let's start off with with how everything came about to where we're at with with your boy. Um, about uh, oh I'd say two months ago, two and a half months ago. Uh, all of a sudden, just kind of out of the blue, my son started having a lot of accidents. Uh, during the night uh, at school and stuff, it wasn't something that was normal for him. And he just—he's super athletic. He always wants to go, go, go. And he was drinking constantly. So we, I thought, you know, he just turned ten years old and stuff. You know, he might have been just kind of hitting the growth spurt. You know, being thirsty, being—he's always going and stuff. And uh, like I said, with the accidents just happening, he started having them kind of frequent at school and stuff. And we we really started getting concerned about it sure. and uh, drove us to go to the doctor and kind of get things checked out and ended up when we were there they did blood work on him and that's how everything kind of come about to uh, find out uh, that he was a type 1 diabetic so what's that do to to his world um it's it it, it really he, he's almost on a, a two hour schedule now he, yeah. in the morning he wakes up and he's got to check his blood sugar then he's then he's got to get his insulin shot, and thirty minutes later he's got to eat, and then two two hours later he's got to have a snack, and then two hours later he's uh, you know back to checking his sugar, and then thirty minutes after that he's on a meal and stuff. But it, it's not slowing him down, any, you know, being active and stuff. It's just it's just a lot more structured uh, for you know his diabetes, diabetes and stuff. We really got to it's more of a strict diet than anything for it. Sure. Uh, how about for you? I mean, as a as a parent going through that, you know, a lot of the unknown. Thankfully, diabetes is something that they can put a put a tack in pretty quick and figure out what's going on just just with a couple of those blood tests. But at the same time, you're going through that the the, the mystery of the unknown and trying to work through all of that, and you got to feel at least initially just about helpless. Oh, for sure. You know, we we all want you know our kids to grow up be healthy uh you know do good in school and you know try to become something themselves when you know, they get older and stuff and you know if they hurt themselves or you know they got a problem we always like to be there to help them through it and you know do, do the best we can to you know help them get past them and stuff and this is just something as a as a parent you know you just kind of you're still there for them and stuff but it's just something that they've got you, you know they're going through and uh, you you just got to sit back and you know live day by day with them you know from then on and you just can't take you know take it away from them or really do anything for them through it. Is this severe enough to where um, I know he's going to be insulin dependent for uh, forever at this point until they can figure out a way to to curb it or a remedy uh, type one diabetes. But at the same time, is there any likelihood that once things do get stabilized, you might be able to transition over to pump? in order to avoid having to do the injections? Yeah, that's something that's a possibility. Uh, yeah. we, like I said, it's just been a month now that sure. he's been diagnosed and we kind of went over everything. But um, they want they want him to get everything, you know, halfway. Le- they're pretty, pretty consistent on being leveled mm-hmm. out. And uh, that's something that we can move towards is maybe a pump. 
Uh, same thing with the, instead of having to check his sugar by pricking his finger every two hours and stuff, there's also like a monitor you can yep. wear now to do that as well. Mm-hmm. But they wanted him to get used to knowing how to check it. That way right. he's not depending on, you know, an electronic device telling him all the time. But it's something that we can potentially move towards later on, yeah. Which does, it, it definitely picks up the, the quality of life for sure versus having to stick yourself every so often. Uh, my brother was... Uh, pretty rough in the early stages of it still struggles every now and again with um, diabetes and I don't even remember how old he was I think he was he was probably pretty close to Corbin's age when they determined that he had uh, diabetes and I remember you know the, the regular pin pricks and having the syringes and, and life got a little bit more simple once he got to the um, got to have the pump there's some of the some of the resources that are out there now in terms of blood monitoring and stuff like that that you can wear that'll sync right up to a smartphone and it'll tell you in live time exactly what your sugar levels are doing and and, and that's helped uh, the the folks that have their stuff stabilized out quite a bit you know in, in terms of uh, moving out of that honeymoon period where your pancreas is still working a little bit here and there uh, into the the full shutdown mode uh, uh-huh. and more into that maintenance stage of things. Um, a month in, it's still got to be pretty up and down. Does he have to get up at night to check too, or no? Yeah, we we do it uh, five times during the day, and we still got to get him up at three o'clock in the morning and uh, check it at that time as well. Tomorrow is our one month uh, doctor appointment checkup on him, and mm-hmm. hopefully that'll that'll end tomorrow. His sure. the sugar levels he's had about a uh, you know about a solid week where it's been in what we call the normal range, right. uh, 70 to 150, mm-hmm. 71 to 150. Uh, like Saturday, his sugar just kept bottoming him out. No matter how many snacks we had, he, he'd fall <laughs> below 70. He'd have a snack. Uh, an hour later, he'd be back down to 50. Right. And uh, so it, it's still it's still fluctuating, but we're, I think we're getting more towards the, the leveling side of it. So in the midst of all this, you're still trying to put a car together for Blizzard Bash. Yeah, yeah. During, during that time period, I... I <laughs> was in the process of it and about the time all this kind of hit i was i was towards the end of wrapping it up and stuff but i still had you know a couple of weeks worth of decent work left and then all of a sudden this hit yep so was there any point where you thought maybe the car wouldn't get done I, yeah i <laughs> i felt that sorry i, I kind of keep getting emotional about this um yeah there was i, I kind of thought you know that i wouldn't finish it and at, at the same time period when we were in the hospital, I just wanted to, I just wanted to sell everything. Sure. I mean, and, and why wouldn't uh, you, you know, at that point you'd, you'd be willing to trade, trade spots, trade everything, any opportunity that you had, you know, to, to make this thing go away. You know, it's a very human side of demolition derby. Exactly. I, I wanted to sell everything, you know, do whatever I could to help them, uh, you know, to be there for them. And I mean, obviously the, the expenses that come with it. Uh, you sure. know, we were in the hospital for a week. A uh, couple of days before that, we just spent, you know, um, a pretty decent amount of money on medication and stuff. Then we get to the hospital, and they switch everything he's on, so we had to respend that money. Right. Insurance didn't want to cover part of it because part of it was just filled and uh, under, uh, you know, a different brand and stuff. So, right. you know, there's that complications and stuff as well. But Yeah, it's uh, definitely... <laughs> trying and challenging to to uh to say the least on it uh, i remember when when my brother was going through it he used to have to take two different injections one was a fast acting insulin and one was a, a longer acting insulin uh one was one was synthetic and i think one was like pig insulin or something like that if i if i remember the the situation correctly and, and there was some he's going through battles now himself still as an adult with with coverage for his for his medications and stuff so it, it certainly is understandable to be in a situation where you've got that that trying um, time but you've also got a good team around you what did what did those guys do in terms of helping make sure that you could be out there to help represent your team uh the combination that you've got around you again uh, we've we've talked about this group a number of times trey hewer uh, Rob Hewer, Mason Larson. It's a it's a pretty good group on Team Caddy Nation. Oh, for sure, yeah, definitely. Uh, I was I was at Corey Lettington shop actually because we're we're uh, a little closer than me and Rob and Trey. And uh, I was down there and I've been building it and stuff. And Corey, he was building his car and he of course runs his helps with his trucking business and stuff. So he was in the process of that and stuff. Rob and Trey had their cars wrapped up and said, you know, why don't you bring your stuff down here? 
we're not doing nothing. Our cars are wrapped up. You know, all we got to do is load our stuff up. So I loaded my stuff up and went down there, and uh, we spent, I think, three days and wrapped everything up. I mean, I was sitting real good after that weekend. Uh, after Corbin got out of the hospital and everything, and, you know, he was at home uh, doing quite a bit better. How did Blizzard Bash go from your perspective? It went good. I mean, we, uh, us as a team and every other team always goes out there shooting for a win. We made it through the heat good. Uh, we, like I said, we were hoping for a win in the in the feature. I come out and just, I was, I was really overwhelmed overall with everything that went on during the weekend. So my mind probably wasn't as clear as it was, but my driving style kind of took over and I, I was a little more aggressive than what I really felt like. I got in a bad situation. I got put on the wall. Uh, Rob had a bad shot to a wheel, broke a hub off. Mm-hmm. Trey accidentally uh, put a hole in a tranny line, burned up a transmission. So Mason carried us down to the end and just kind of run out of uh, wheels left to, you know, finish it. But I was happy with the outcome for what we were che- what we were faced with. But like I said, we all, everybody goes out to shoot for a win and just – we fell a little short of it, but we had a good time, and we'll be back next year to try to repeat that. Saw a lot of the airbrushing and some of the uh, some of the torch and plasma cutter work on the team's cars with all the Corbin Strong, uh, and then come to find out the community as a whole came together to raise a, a significant amount of money to help offset some of the costs for uh, – for you and your family and for Corbin that, that are tied with the medicines and the hospital stay and stuff like that. Did you know that that was happening on the periphery? Not really. I, I, I kind of had a little bit of an idea of it. Uh, we were, like I said, we were in the hospital and stuff and uh, me and my wife and I talked about, you know, selling all my derby stuff and mm-hmm. Rob, Rob Huer called me and, you know, said, you know, we, we want to do a little benefit for you. And I, I kind of, we kind of had some words back and forth about it, you know, as friends do. And I told him, you know, I really wasn't crazy about that idea. And he told me, no, he said, you're always doing stuff. And he said, we want to do this for you. So just sit back and, you know, we want to do this for you. So I kind of had an idea there was something going on, but I really didn't know the extent of it. I, I didn't have any idea of any actual plans that were in place. So, so then what happens? I mean, they they start getting this little bit of a grassroots movement, starting to share a little bit of the story, and it takes on a life of its own. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we got there, and you know, I, there there was, there was a lot of people involved in it. Uh, mm-hmm. Corey Luddington, and I think he kind of headed it up. I think for the most part. I mean, to, to, I still really don't know to the extent of who <laughs> did what for sure and who really was in charge of everything, but. Uh, and it was, they, you know, start selling the bracelets and stickers, and I kind of thought that was going to be the weekend thing. I thought I didn't, you know, really realize that we were going to be down on the floor, and all that was going to take place. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, until that, until that actually happened, I, I really wasn't aware of anything that was going on. So, you and uh, you, you and Corey both. Um, I think I think we're speaking fairly here. Have taken have taken turns at, uh, taken turns at different points as being uh, uh, pretty popular in the derby community in 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 good ways and and in unpopular ways at, at different times. Um, but after some of the some of the showings that you've had at, at Blizzard Bash and and the people that are close to you that know you. Uh, know that you've got a a giant heart and will do anything for anybody and we've we've come to know that uh of you as well uh, also on in terms of your driving style it's very very entertaining to watch in the day where a lot of teams or, or drivers would would lay back and tend to drive for the money versus driving for the show um what were some of your reactions given given the history of demolition derby and and the different sides of the fence that you've been on going through everything that you've seen in, in Topeka, uh, just looking at Topeka, you know, not to mention all the stuff that you've had at some of your home derbies, that's got to be uh, just a, an absolutely surreal moment to be on the floor in Topeka and having that entire arena uh, 100% behind you and, and Corbin. It, it, yeah, word, words can't, you know, words can't really describe the the emotions that we were feeling, how how grateful um, I and we as a family 
you know, word of that. You know, like I said, I'm I, I'm always willing to help anybody I can. You know, I'll I'll junk your car on the track if I can, or you can <laughs> junk my car, but I'll be the first guy over there to give you a hand. Uh, you know, people come up to me this weekend or, la- or at Blizzard Bash and was needing parts. I said, you know, just take them. You you break them or something. You know, we'll work it out. Whatever. You know, do whatever you need. And um, just to just to be in that spot and have so many people who I don't know and never met just take time to come down and talk to me or talk to Corbin mm-hmm. or to give us something. You know, uh, whatever that may be, money wise or anything. It just, I, I can't express the words, you know, the, the, that we're so grateful for that, to uh, mm-hmm. be in that type of family, that type of community, that here's 10,000 people, and they can feel what we're going through, and they want to help, you know, however that may be, that they want to help us. Um, it just, yeah, I, we just can't describe how much love that is to us. Um. As Corbin, Corbin's not old enough. He's never had a chance to drive in any youth derbies or anything like that, right? No, no. He he, talk, he talks about it. Uh, he keeps talking about getting on the track with me and and wrecking me and stuff. But uh, yeah. he, he's done a he's done a power wheel derby a time or two. But as far as uh, a full size car, compact car, or nothing. He's he's ten years old. He's never done nothing yeah, like not, that yet. Not not quite I've, yet. I've, 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 I've let him drive my car around the shop and stuff a little bit. But other than that, he's never been on the track yet. No, all in time though. I trust. Yeah, in, in time, in time. <laughs> I I hope I hope he does. I hope this is, ends up being a, as much fun of a story to follow once he gets in the car as it has been following Trey and Rob. Oh, most definitely. I I you know the the relationship they have is you know just awesome, and to be able to share those kind of moments, you know, with your son. Uh, you know, I can't. I can't wait to be able to do that with him. He he loves you know everything derby related. He's in the shop with me. He always wants to. Uh, when he when he, kind of when he was younger, when he started out, want, was always wanting to change tires. He always wanted to change tires. Yeah. He, you know, gra- grab my half inch impact, and is about all he can do to you know to hang on to it. And but he he wants to take off the lug nuts. He wants me to set on the wheel, and then he wants to put the lug nuts on and tighten them down. And I've kind of got him in the shop doing a little welding and stuff with me and stuff now, but. He, he wants to be a part of it all. He, he just likes to hanging out with me and helping me out and That's everything awesome. involved with it. What's uh, what's next? You said that you've got your, your one-month appointment coming up. Um, from there, it sounds like you'll be able to get rid of some of the some of the midnight wake-ups and you can get back a little bit to uh, a regular uh, night sleeping pattern. But, but overall... Um, what are you guys looking at in terms of the rest of the school year and things like that for him? Is, is life pretty much back to normal then? It, yeah, it, it, it is as normal as it can get. And like I said, sure. now, like I said, during the day, you know, hours from, from about seven thirty to eight o'clock, it's about every two hours. He's got something going on, but uh, he, yeah. he's, he wakes up, he go, he's going to school and, uh, you know, whatever he has during school and then after school activities and stuff. And then, you know, homework and stuff at night and, playing outside and stuff so he's, he's fairly, and back into a fairly normal routine like I said hopefully after tonight he will get be able to get a full night's sleep again and uh, won't have to be getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning but even even that for him he, he just rolls over kind of throws his hand out lets you check his blood sugar and <laughs> he goes right back, to, right back to sleep So, and that's right about the time you're coming in from well down the cars anyway so it works out it, 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 the week before it was yeah <laughs> uh, how about uh, how about for you? I mean, what's what's next from here? Uh, just just continuing on doing you know what I have been. Uh, I'll probably be picking up a few hours at work and uh, looking ahead for carnage, kind of seeing what I'm going to do about that, and just doing things with the family and stuff. Yeah, family first. It's probably not a bad idea. Um, lastly, is there any place that people can continue to donate to that cause, or have you guys started to direct people to? Uh, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. What, what's if anybody wants to help out the cause? What's your best advice to them? Uh, I'm really not sure. We, as far as for him, we've got a PayPal set up. If anybody wants, you know, feels that they want to still donate for that. Um, other than that, or we, and we still got bracelets and stickers. If anybody wants any of that stuff to, you know, wear, have. Sure. 
Sure. So the best for, the best thing for anybody to do that might be interested, they can just get a hold of you on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, the, the, definitely me, Crystal, uh, Rob, or yeah, Kelly, Jenny, Amy, Corey. Any of us would be able to help them. That's uh, that's awesome. I heard uh, that was one of the only times that the rest of the arena was equally as loud as as your section. Yeah, I, I believe so. <laughs> um. Any final thoughts for, from from you or, or, or anything that you wanted to say to the community that is, has rallied behind you guys so much? Yeah, I've got I've got the page written out here. Uh, it shouldn't take me more than that. Yeah, I know you guys got a show to put on. Nope, not even worried about it. The time is yours. Just to re- read it out real quick. But Go for it. I, 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 overall, I mean, I, I really want to thank every single person who helped us in any way, talked to us or anything, but the people that just stood out just a little bit, uh, Jacob Wood for the, the raffle, the raffles and stuff he done, Aaron Harrington with WCR Fabrication, Dylan, Edward Dingley, Vic and Nicole Whaley for the German Shepherd Pup that they donated to us, <laughs> Jonathan Hughes with NLR, Candace Joe, T- Tim and Russ Clark with Smash It, CJ Revel with HRT, Scott's Derby Tire, Scott McBroom, Brian Ozowski with Bees Automotive, Jeremy Baker, and uh, everybody who took the time out of their day to talk to us or Corbin and share their stories with us, everybody who purchased a sticker bracelet or donated anything at all, thanks to all my family and friends who support and help all get get all this set up without them. None of this would have been possible. Big thanks to Corey and Amy, Rob and Kelly, Jenny and Jeff, and Crystal and Natisha. Special thanks to Crystal for helping me through this. It's a huge change for our family. And without her... I don't know what we'd be doing. She's my rock and has really dedicated the last month to learning everything she can to help us and Corbin. But thank you to everybody from the bottom of my family's heart that we appreciate everything you've done for us. That's the thing that we always say about uh, Demolition Derby is, is, boy, everybody's ready to tear each other apart right up until somebody needs something and then everybody's right there. Exactly. For sure. Well, I certainly look forward to catching up with you guys when we're back out there in Topeka for Capital City Carnage. That'll be here <laughs> before we know it. And um, and I wish you guys the best, uh, of course, at your meeting, or excuse me, at your doctor's appointment here coming up. And, and hopefully things can continue to get closer and closer to a stable world in, in your new normal with this. It, it's something that'll be there forever, but it's something that, that, that is certainly manageable and you can do pretty much anything you want to with it. Yes. It was good to see all the community wrap, uh, wrap around you guys and, uh, and, and you guys are doing good. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on the show and talking about this, Teddy. It's, it's exceptionally personal, but I think it's a, it's something that people need to know about just like we've done with, uh, some of this stuff with, um, Team Teague and stuff with spinning wheels and things like that. You're uh, you're just as important to us up here in the Northeast as, as as the stuff that's close to us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. You bet, Teddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. See, See you later. There goes Teddy Papadopoulos. We're going to shift gears real quick now and get a hold of Jacob Prusman. If you're wondering where everybody is uh, real quick, uh, you've noticed that the camera's been on me all evening. And you don't hear any other voices. That's because there's nobody else here. Josh is at a game right now with Trent. Uh, they had a basketball game tonight. And Brian was ordered, I believe the way that it went, is he was ordered to work a double tonight and next Monday. And I'm wondering if it was tied to him going deer hunting because I saw a lot of pictures from him in a stand. I talked to Josh briefly over the weekend, and he was in a tree stand as well. Um, there was My Facebook was flooded with down deer pictures and a lot of our uh, derby friends and family all over the northeast were able to knock down some good sized bucks and some some new trophies to hang on the wall so that was good to see that they were successful and and first and foremost above all that they were all safe which was which was very good to hear about uh birthday wise jordan rutherford had a birthday today so happy birthday to him as we get jacob on the phone hopefully jacob remembers that we were talking tonight you there? Hey. And good news. 
Jacob does. There's Jacob on the line. Jacob, how are you? Doing good. How are you? We're doing okay. We're doing doing real good right now because everything is working the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Jacob was on the Team GWC Bomber Transmission Group that won the qualifying bracket at Blizzard Bash. And when we were talking on Facebook about coming on, you said you had to wait and see how things went in Topeka because you really didn't know how things were going to play out. And then you turned around and won the thing, and you've now got a spot in that national bracket. How's uh, how's this leave you feeling? I still don't believe it, honestly. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, I still have a load of the car, so maybe we get the car in the shop. But I'll start believing it a little more. <laughs> yeah, where's the, where's the car now? Car's still in the trailer. Uh, trying to take it easy, still trying to catch up on some sleep, but uh, maybe by the end of this weekend it'll be in the shop. Gotcha. Um, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it once it's in there? Just get your power plant out, strip the shell, and, and junk it. Or are you going to try and plate it up some so you can run it someplace next next year, next um, next spring? I'm actually going to bring it back to Topeka in March. Okay. Figured maybe that was the direction that we were going with it. Is it is it hurt bad? Uh, I already signed up, so I hope it's not worse than I uh, think it is. <laughs> Didn't have a chance to look real close at it. No, it still looks pretty good. The steering needs rebuilt, but other than that, I think it's in good shape. Yeah, but that's a given. I mean, that's, that doesn't mean anything anymore. Most most guys go out there knowing that the steering has a, has a limited shelf life anyway. Yeah, uh, that's the first one we built for out there, so going to try to work on that a little bit better because it broke two, two of the three rounds. So. Yeah. Take me through the weekend. I mean, you're teamed up with uh, – I walked I walked away from the page. Hang on one second here. All right. GWC Bombers was uh, Tyler Twos, Cody Gaines, and Alex Weber running with you. So tell me uh, a little bit more uh, about how the weekend went from your perspective. I mean, certainly the qualifying bracket you know, offers its own set of challenges. And as I as we talked about before, I think that's the tougher bracket to it's the tougher bracket to get into, uh, excuse me, to get through, even at times because there comes with the additional pressures uh, of trying to make it into that national draw. Yeah, we drew killer transmission the first night, and <laughs> uh, they only had two cars past tech, so things right. kind of fell our way there. Um, that set us, us, us up good for Friday night. We went into bush light and. Uh, I think every car on the track was hurting after that one. Right. So we made it through and had all day Saturday to piece them back together for Sunday. And then, then getting bush light is, is not an easy draw. <laughs> not an easy draw at all. That's a former national bracket team right there, and, and they just need to get a couple couple flashes of luck to fall their way, and, and they're going to be right back in that national bracket. And in that national bracket, they're, they're going to cause headaches for somebody at – some point it's just it, it, that's just a fact so to take a win over them as experienced as they are that's a that's a good feather in the cap that punches your ticket into the feature and it buys you some time what did you find on saturday that when when you had a chance to look at the cars and figure out you know what we need to focus on um mine itself we just had to rebuild the steering back on it and then we saved a few plates uh put those on the car and got it ready mm-hmm. uh, a couple of the other cars are looking pretty good there's one that was tore up pretty bad so Everybody lend a hand on that and got it back together. Um, and then RPM Redemption came out of the Conti. Um, so mm-hmm. we knew they were, you know, they were beat up, but they still had four cars. One of those ended up not making it to the track Sunday, unfortunately. Right. But uh, That's the Quast and Crete low, right? Yep, yep. And uh, we had heard that a couple teams were running together, so we ended up doing the politic in a little bit, talked with Team Blackout, and that worked out well for us. So you go, you go back out there now, uh, and you got a little bit of, little bit of help to work with. And yep. and how's the fe- does does the feature follow the script that you'd sort of mapped out in your mind? In a way, um, I lost steering. I think there was twelve cars left when I lost steering. So uh, that bomber transmission was doing the steering for me. So uh, a lot of cars lost steering, and in, in the end, there come down to myself and Tyler, and then three blackout cars and Willie Lochner. Um, mm-hmm. Willie was a tough out. Always is. Yep. I told him that afterwards, and uh, he just laughed about it. I mean, team Blackout's no slouch either. Kurt Brinkman runs with that team, and he won Winter Slam this year. He's got Jared Heaney working with him there. We've seen him run uh, in the past with um, uh, Matt and Colton Newhalfen down yep. there. Um, and then who else was on that team? Oh, Jeremy Kish. Uh, he's won Crossroads a couple times. He's had some success at, at Winter Slam. That's a that's a tough team to 
to be locking horns with, but it's got to make you feel a little good to have them on your side too. It did, it did. And at the end there, there's three of them and two of us, and I was just waiting to get beat on. And so <laughs> the way it ended up, we, we lucked out for sure. Um, Tyler and myself were hung together. If it weren't for blackout, we'd have been the third-place team. They got us got us separated there at the right. end. So, I mean, you said that it hasn't sunk in yet, but at the same time you're starting to look at what's left in the field, you know, with, with Willie still in there as a factor. And then you've got uh, Team Blackout with three cars. You've got two. Did it, at any point it feel like, well, we can at least breathe a little bit now because we're down to the last two teams, and at this point we're into the national draw. Whatever happens from here is just bonus. There was a red flag there towards the end. Uh, Willie still had his stick up, and there was still a three black flag or blackout and two of us. And after it went back green, Willie's car, it didn't move again. Mm-hmm. And it all went pretty quick from there. But uh, – right. Tyler and I were hung up, you know, a minute prior to that, and it looked like it was over. Mm-hmm. So, what's this? What's this mean for you now? I mean, this is this has got to be this has got to rank right up there among the top wins. Yeah, for sure, this is number one. How many attempts did it take? I, I can't. I can't honestly remember. Uh, the GWC team, which is Tyler and Cody, right. um, they've been down there. This was their third year. This was three. Um, okay. Alex, Alex ran with them last year. I had some circumstances. I was supposed to run with them. Something came up the week of the week of the show. Um, I called Alex on Monday afternoon. He took my spot, mm-hmm. and uh, that's how that's how that all happened. Gotcha. So this was my first time down there, actually, but third time for the team. Gotcha. That's that's where I was losing count. I, I thought that you'd been down there once before with a different team, and and it was three for three for GWC. Everything starts to run together. I mean, it's it's crazy how much action that you actually get to see through the course of the year in Landon Arena. Um, yep. Three tries and to get into the national bracket. Uh, what's what's the scope for next year look like? I mean, have, have you, I saw the poster with the dates, November seventh to tenth. So the promoters were already thinking about next year. Have you given it any thought? Yeah, um, the four of us are actually going to run Spring X again together, so mm-hmm. hopefully we can work out, you know, we've ran together a couple times now, everything seems to be working well, but hopefully we can, you know, work together again out there, get a little bit better, and uh, go back down to Topeka and just try not to finish last, I guess. <laughs> right, right. you got to finish 14th or better and you'll be fine. Yep, yep, <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> How many times do you have to run together before you start getting that team chemistry? We've seen some of these teams that have run together for a long time, and they move and think as one. Uh, they've got that divide and conquer uh, strategy for for some teams. Uh, a couple other teams, it's it's like watching them herd calves. You know the way they flank them and and, and drive the drive the opposing car into the hits that they want. Other times we go out there and we see teams. It looks like four people that just happen to show up at a demolition derby, and they have their cars painted the same, and they drive their own. They drive their own derby. They don't. They don't really pay attention to what their teammates are doing. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a learning curve with the strategizing and and getting to a point where you can work fluidly together and and, and in unison. But how long does that take? I mean, I'm sure geography plays into it too. If you don't have the opportunity to drive together in the summer, so that you can practice some of that, that that factors in as well. But what's what's the what's the fermentation time before before everything's ready? Right now, that was only the second time we've run together, so that's like I, like I said. Hopefully, we can you know spring X learn a bit a little bit more, and maybe throughout the summer, uh, Alex can travel out this way and we can hit a show together. But uh, the three the three of us, Alex or uh, Cody, Tyler, and myself. We all run some northern Illinois or northern Iowa, southern sure. Minnesota stuff, but Alex is kind of out there on his own. So, right, um, that's that's the hard part. Time to get a new rig and start towing, right? Yeah, he bought a new pickup, so now he's got no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you guys ran Spring X together last year? Yep, yep. We got uh, we drew JWC in the first round. Uh, Zach had some issues with the transmission, but we ended up we won the heat, and then. Uh, Made it into the feature, and I think stupid luck happened to everybody in the feature. Mm-hmm. That that kind of stuff happens, but again, you know, it, it's easier to get that stuff out of the way early in the year and and not tear up your cars than to have the stupid stuff happen when it's down to the last four. Right. Yep. I've yeah. still got that car at home too. I need to figure where I'm around that. I was out <laughs> in the summer with injury, so. I've got just, a couple of world cars laying around. Just, just keep sticking them out front and and put a trophy next to it. Everybody thinking the thing that you just keep winning, winning, and winning. <laughs> You have to talk to them about that. Right. How would they feel about it? I'm sure they'd be proud of you. Yeah, the shop's out at my parents' place. Uh, we do everything out there. My mom loves the derby stuff, but she hates the junkyard. 
that's what everyone calls it. <laughs> well, for us to do well, that that definitely helps. Well, you're not going to have a museum and, and a successful derby team. It's got to look it's got to look rough because it's organized chaos, right? If it's 10 p.m., we can go out back and get parts for about anything we need. We don't need a parts store. That's that's pretty <laughs> cool. I mean, that's yeah. that's nice, but uh, you know, just just kind of trying to pair what what that would entail. Uh, it seems like there's probably a lot more stuff out there than than your mom wants to put up with. Yeah, a lot of it's hidden. We got to do a little tidying up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what are you looking at for for next year? In addition to uh, Spring X and, and and Blizzard Bash, are we going to see you in Topeka in March? Yeah, I'm going to run that same car down there in the mod class, mm-hmm. and then uh, we got Spring Explosion. Probably run a couple of local shows. Um, I've actually got a couple of shows I'll be promoting next summer close to home. We did the one this year. We picked up another one next year, and then focus on Blizzard Bash again. Where are those two shows? Uh, Boone, Iowa. We did one last year here in 2018. Um, we had 23 cars. The last show they had down there was in 2011. They had four cars. Wow. So That's a nice turnaround. Tried getting that one back on the map. And then Adele, Iowa, we're going to have uh, July 14th. And then Boone will be July 20th in 2019. Boone, Iowa. Is that... Is that Home the, of the IMCA Super National. That's, yeah, that's where I was going with that. Those are the real yeah. IMCAs, too. Not like the stuff they got out here. Right. And uh, that's all at the Boone Speedway. We're at the fairgrounds in town, but it's, it's the same town, different location. Right. Okay. I think yep. you should, I think if this goes well, you should talk them into having a demolition derby during the Nationals weekend. <laughs> Maybe the week after. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they'll love all the, all the scattered stuff all over the front stretch so that the, those IMCA cars will run it over and pop their tires all night long. Yeah. They get tore up pretty good down there as it is. They, yeah. They don't need your help, right? No. Well, no. <laughs> I heard one time, and I don't know if if you can verify this or not, when Mike Worth and JYD came up to run the Wadena Grand Slam, I think in 2013 or 2014, he had this motor that screamed, and word was it came out of an IMCA car that was down in that, that, that neck of the woods. That that could have been. I know a lot of these guys' engines are better than stock car motors. So yeah, they they, <laughs> they find the cast offs that already been loosened up, and they do a bunch of work to them to make them make them generate insane horsepower because they don't have to run yeah. for the sustained RPM, doing lap after lap after lap the way that some of those cars do. The AMCA class relies so much on the, the momentum side of things that they're not quite the same. It's not exactly a, a, a parallel in terms of the the motor combinations. But that's right. cool that you've got those the, the couple shows. So is this a, is this something that you're expecting to build and bud into something more extravagant, or you want to keep it small? Uh, we'll have to see where it goes. Um, yeah. The Boone thing last year, one of my customers uh, was on the fairboard. He was discussing getting the derby going, and he asked, you know, who he should get a hold of. And I told him, you know, I could help him out with it, and it worked out well. Like I said, I. I had surgery right after spring explosion, so I was out all summer, so I was at least able to do something on, on that side of things. Right. So uh, a couple of different things jump into my mind. First is, is how does that conversation even get struck up? Did he know that you had a background in demolition derby? But I think before that, I want to ask you about just the, the simple fact of bringing a demolition derby back someplace. It doesn't happen. If someplace loses a demolition derby, it's dead, it's gone, and it's not returning. It is It is very atypical to see the demolition derby come back and to have one gone in 2011 with four cars and and all of a sudden it's back on the map seven years later to pull 23 that's that is not a small accomplishment that that's that's a major deal uh for the county fair type level so how did how did that come about and 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 what is I guess what's the what what was the the reasoning behind losing the derby and what was the reasoning behind bringing it back but by bringing it back, uh, he was new to the fair board, and they'd been losing money on a different event each year, and he wanted to try something different. Right. And, uh, <laughs> That's relatable. That was the main reasoning for it. And uh, I have to thank a lot of people for bringing cars out. I, you know, try to ask every friend I've got to bring something. I don't care what it is. Just right. every car counts. Absolutely. So... My, my frame of reference from Iowa is obviously Candace and, and what she does with Domination uh, and and Brandon Tyson and, and now Ben, who do um, the, the Plymouth County Fair and Lamar. That scene uh, is is a heavier build, 
but it seemed like there's also some interest in in the stalker side of things so what were your shows built around obviously running the qualifying teams and bringing a car back for the mod class in march to topeka shows that you've got some interest in that mod stuff how did you go about putting together your rules and and your offerings for the folks we did a, a full world class a mod class yeah. and with the first year i threw out there that you know any big show car uh Oski team show blizzard bash type rules spring explosion any of those big big show cars, uh, if you have kickers in them, cut them out and bring them down. Sure. Uh, then we did an 80s and old iron stock mix, which my county fair, which was 20 miles north of, of Boone, pretty similar to those rules, except we allowed the iron in. And then we just did a stock compact to where, you know, about anybody could pull something off the street and, and run it. Right. And so We're adding this year, we're going to do a minivan SUV class, same thing, knock the windows out and go. There was a... Mm-hmm. Uh, big demand for that last year so hopefully hopefully the guys you know show up with the cars that's that's great and and is the other show that you've added going to be pretty much the same going to run four divisions uh we're looking at three to four uh that actually they had a fair board meeting the thursday of blizzard bash <laughs> that and i told them you know i'm not going to be able to make it um a buddy of mine was working on my car down in the pits on friday and he's the one that told me yeah it passed so Awesome. I got to meet with those guys the first of January and get some stuff, you know, figured out with that. But right now, I just have the date, and uh, we'll go from there. Where are you going to be in five years? You going to have fifteen shows? <laughs> I don't know about that. No. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully, we'll be uh, running on the national team still in five years. We'll see what happens. Right, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think you guys, <laughs> you guys got the skill set. You got the, you got the build ability. I mean. It, it, I don't think that you should have any trouble uh, getting to that point, but just looking at what your home area is with with the the heavy built cars and things like that, and and what you've got now, um, that technology is going to continue to change. And and as a promoter and, and somebody who's overseeing rules and things like that, it is going to give you a little bit different perspective on what some of these rules mean and how some of these rules are read. And, and it's going to give you the ability to see up close and personal what some of the technologies are doing as it evolves as you get ready to go back to blizzard bash in the fall right well and i see you know uh randy maslowski that does winter slam stacy mm-hmm. Flynn from northern iowa mm-hmm. those guys put on a lot of shows during the year and you usually don't see them running many shows unless it's a big show so right i don't want to get too big where i can't run the local stuff i still like i'm only 26 i'd like to run some more right <laughs> it's a little too early to get into retirement yeah, we talked to a lot of people that that put their emphasis on Blizzard Bash at the end of the year that use their local stuff as practice runs. They shake down motors, they work on transmissions, they try different build styles and different combinations. And and uh, even Dustin Ingram, if I remember the interview correctly, he was the one that said, you know, it keeps you sharp. It's a much different deal to run in March, promote all summer, and then come back and try to run in November without any seat time. It it, it is like riding a bike in that you know what you have to do, but everything's happening so fast around you. If you haven't sharpened that pencil, it's going to be dull. Exactly. Yep. So, at this point, then you know you're looking at, at spring explosion. You're looking at promoting a little bit, and and you're only 26. You've got you've got a lot of a lot of derby ahead of you. What what struck you the most about Blizzard Bash, and and what struck you the most about being a promoter um, at? I mean, I'm not going to say that you're uh, uh, new to the sport at the age of 26, but it's it certainly has a um, you know. Experience and age isn't isn't uh, necessarily um, correlating here. You know what I mean? You've got you you, right. you, get, you got a lot more well, to see. I've been running since I've been sixteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been tripping cars since I was old enough to walk. <laughs> right. Uh, I've been around in my whole life. Um, the Blizzard Bash thing, uh, you know, it's it's number one in the country. So obviously, you want to be able to run there if you can. Um, back in twenty twelve, I think it was. Metal Mayhem was number one, sure. and that's what we strive for back then. So you want to go you know, to the best show there is. Uh, how about in terms of putting the cars together, uh, in, in terms of building it, in terms of uh, what the experience is, experience is when you got out there and went through tech and what you saw that you were going to be up against? You know, What was some of your perspective on that stuff? Um, I had a pretty short lift. Um, it was the first time I built out there, so I didn't want to do anything sure. too wild. Um, I keep telling everybody I'm underbuilt. We need to work on that, that front suspension next year, but uh, seeing what was out there this year, I might do some things differently next year if I built the same style car, yeah. for sure. 
Yeah, it seems like once you find the car that you like for out there, you don't deviate a whole lot from it. You know, the guys that like Cadillacs are bringing Cadillacs. The guys that like Fords are bringing Fords. Um, there's more right. more roundbacks out there this year than I think we've ever seen. But yeah, there's a lot of money destroyed on that track. Yeah, <laughs> we started doing the math on it uh, one time when we were at Basher Cash about just with the general shell, general motor, mm-hmm. uh, general transmission, and general rear end would w- would amount to. So we had a particular value of of the car, um, ranging from the kicker class at Bash for Cash down to the street stock class, and sort of calculated averages, and then calculated how many cars. And came up with just some astronomical numbers that were that were invested into that derby. We never did that in in full force at, at Blizzard Bash, but I think it'd be a fun thing to sit down and look at the paper and and run some of the numbers and and figure out exactly how much money was on track um, throughout the whole course of the four day weekend. But I mean, just looking at what was on track for your feature and the national feature, how much how much money is sitting there? You know, some of those cars had it, it's no joke to have twenty to thirty thousand dollars invested in one of those cars that's out there running for the national championship. Exactly. Yep. And you saw a lot of old iron, you know, you see yeah. $1,500 to $3,000 shells out there. Even our feature, there was 19 cars on the back. I think I was one of three crown vets. Right. How'd the crown vet hold up against the old iron? You know, I was worried when we got down there, I started looking at all the cars and there, there weren't many ports. Um, <laughs> but it, it held up good. It's, it's still in good shape. Um, if you're going to bring a Crown Vic, I think, you know, the 03 is the only way to go down there. And yeah. that was proven time and time again down there this weekend. Sure. But well, the National, some of them guys, they, they know how to build the 98 to 02 after the first round they get their plates. But right. for, the, for the most part, the Mole 3s, they're the way to go. I think that's – I'm really happy that you guys took that win. I mean, taking nothing away from the other teams that are out there, we've got friends all over the place out there in Topeka, and, and sometimes it gets hairy saying that we're happy for people because we don't want to upset anybody. But after we had that quick conversation on Facebook to turn around and, and see that you pulled that win down, that was – that was it was really good to see. I told you I'm not much of a talker, so I wasn't going to come on there. <laughs> hey, hey, at this point, you sealed your own deal. We had to wait and see what happened yeah. in Topeka. Now now look. Now look what happened. Now I, you're going to be – I talked with a couple of my other teammates, and the one, he broke his phone down there this weekend, and I told him that he asked me to be on the show. He just laughed at me. He said he didn't get a phone for a few days because he knew something would be coming. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Well, it, it worked out well, I think. And, and look at it this way. Now, if nothing else, if nothing else, we're at least going to be able to call you up and say, hey, you guys won. Now it's sunk in a little bit, and you're ready to roll back out there uh, for the national bracket that you qualified for. What are some of your thoughts? So your second appearance on the crash course is already booked. It's just a matter of what day we pick for it once we get a little bit closer to the fall. Sounds good. <laughs> and then and then think of all the winning and promoting you're going to do this summer. You're going to be a regular. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, well, all joking aside, congratulations. It was, it was awesome to see you guys pull down that win. Well-deserved. Um, and I wish you only the best of luck going forward. you got a busy spring in front of you, a uh, busy fall coming when you get to the national bracket. And... Uh, you guys earned every bit of it. So once you get that car in and it sinks in a little bit, enjoy it. I appreciate it. It was good talking to you, man. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you later. Hey, can I uh, yeah. add one more thing before I go? Yeah, you got. I got one more question for you, too. Go ahead. Uh, there was a couple drivers got hurt down there this weekend, Hammy Hamilton and Derek Creelow. Um, both of them had to have surgeries done. There's GoFundMe pages for both drivers. Um, okay. Just wanted to throw that out there. Both of them are, are out of work right now, and they're getting some medical bills piled. What happened to Derek? Derek broke his hand in the feature. Um, okay. A car hit him and slid up the side, and it broke. It knocked the A-pillar down and smashed his hand. So. Whoa. Yep. Ouch. And what happened but to I just saw those, saw those on Facebook. That uh, Hammy Hamilton, I don't know him personally, but yeah. uh, I think he broke a hip. He had to have surgery as well. So both okay. of those guys are, are down right now. So Hammy, Hammy's in the hospital still in Topeka? I'm not 100 percent sure. I know yeah. I know he was in the hospital and had to have hip surgery, um, and then I think Derek's home. He had to have surgery on the on the hand, and I see he's been throwing a bunch of stuff on Facebook. I don't know if he's trying to, to just you know sure. get rid of some stuff or raise some money for right now. But I just thought I'd throw that out there. Well, oh, that's that's good to know. Uh, Hammy was hurt in the derby itself. Yeah, and the heat. I believe we oh, were wow. actually working on our cars. We heard sirens, and I, I wasn't walking at the time. Right, right. But, uh, well, we'll, uh, it's out there on Facebook if you go to their Facebook page. 
Yeah, I've I've seen a little bit of the the stuff floating around with it, but I didn't realize it was that serious, and I I didn't didn't realize that it was a result of those injuries. I remember the, the injuries were resulting from incidents at uh, on track. Um, I did. I see, know what Derek's was for sure, and wow. I'm pretty sure Hampton's was as well. I yeah, I mean it, it it makes sense. I remember a couple of years ago, uh, Harley. The guy's first name was Harley, and I think he was in a green car. He ended yep, up qualifier team. In the heat. I don't know his name, but I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, he broke his foot up real bad, and he ended up coming back for the rest of the derby in a wheelchair. He, you know, he couldn't drive anymore or anything, but he came back to, to see the rest of the derby. You never like to see anybody get hurt, especially that, you know, we've all got all got jobs to go back to on Monday after that. Exactly. So that's, uh, and it sounded like the one with, with Derek was just a fluke thing. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I was actually right in front of it. Um, GoPro off the front of my car shows the whole thing. Ooh. Is it as gnarly as it sounds? What's that? Is it as gnarly as it sounds on the GoPro? You can't see a whole lot on the GoPro. Yeah. And he had, you know, a long sleeve and glove on, but uh, I saw the x-ray, you know, the picture of the x-ray, and it, it doesn't look pretty. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, definitely speedy recoveries to both of those guys. We'll, uh, we'll do a little bit of digging on that um, in, in the weeks to come and see if we can maybe connect with some of those guys. I didn't realize that Derek got hurt at all uh hammy I'd, I'd seen a little bit online but i didn't realize it was it was pertaining to something that had happened on track so that's yeah definitely good call um well wishes to those those guys for sure and then i had a final question for you and i, I can't believe we missed it um who'd you like to thank i mean i gotta i gotta believe that there's more than just just you out there trying to get that car together you got a good team around you and there's a lot of support that comes with that a lot of people uh first and foremost family uh my wife knew she was getting into to an extent. It was county fairs when we started, but now we're more time in the shop than ever. Uh, my mom and my dad, my sister. Uh, my dad, you know, he's out there in the shop with me every step that we build these things hand in hand. Um, Tim McDaniel at Bomber Transmissions. He's been really good to us all year, and uh, those things work great. Um, my teammates, for sure, Tyler, Cody, and Alex. Uh, Jake Flater helped me the last couple of weeks getting this thing done. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't hit the track. And then all the people that helped in the pits, Nate, Dave, John, Terry, the whole GWC crew, um, everybody out there. I actually bought a steering box from Corey Club. We went against him in the first round. I had to buy parts from him just to make the features. So. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's not a rare story, though, when you think about it. Out there in Topeka, right. I think that I think that happens more often than not. Teddy sort of alluded to that too earlier. It's like just just take it and go, take it and go. We'll work it out. We'll work it out afterwards. Whatever whatever you got to borrow to get it out to the track. I had to borrow a ball joint from Jared Heaney, and he was on that team blackout. I told him to sure. look in the right truck because you'd be breaking your own parts. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's happened before. You know, yep. I, I like how the. The Derby family really comes together when it comes to competition, and it and it really comes together when it comes to families in need. So they, they did a good job for did a good job for keeping each other on the track, but I think they did a better job of making sure that Corbin's a little bit taken care of. For sure, yeah, that was great to see that on Saturday night. Yeah, that was that was that was very cool. Uh, it was it was awesome. I mean, that's that's kind of be a bit of a tradition out there with um, with Team Weston. Um, a couple years ago, that that little boy that had the real bad epilepsy, and they did it for uh, Emily Barnes. Um, they did it with team uh, team Tegan, mm-hmm. and now they've done it here with with Corbin, and it's and it's it's never a small figure, and there's always a lot of a lot of support and love put on that track that night. For sure. Well, Jacob, uh, joking aside, again about coming back on, I, I don't want to pin you to do something you don't want to do, but I wish you the best of luck, Spring Explosion, because I look forward to talking to you again soon. Sounds good. You going to be at Capital City? We'll see you down there. All right. Sounds great. Well. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Same to you, man. Thank you. Yep. See you later. Take care. There goes Jacob Prusman. Appreciate all the um, appreciate all the messages coming in on Facebook tonight. Uh, Jake Sherman is listening, which I assume is in his squad car right now. That's a joke. He's he's at work right now. Uh, Teresa Strano tuning in online uh, at Brewster as asking for information about uh, Team Corbin, which is cool. So. Good to see the outpouring of support um, front to back tonight. Appreciate all that, you guys. And also well wishes to Hammy Hamilton and uh, Derek Treetlow. Those guys suffering some injuries, and, and I apologize that we didn't mention that last week. Uh, I missed that. Um, 
a little bit too thoroughly, I suppose. We will be off next week. I'm not going to be in here on, on Monday night, but we will be returning after the Thanksgiving hiatus, if you will, on the 3rd, most likely the 3rd of December. Hopefully we'll have some more bodies in here, and we'll, uh, we'll get back to it again then with another episode of the crash course we appreciate everybody tuning in and hanging out with us for a little while i think that is going to do us for us here um likely on the third we're going to be talking with ed brewster ed brewster's rolled out some new rules for the rc derby side of things and trying to expand the footprint yet again for jmw motorsports diversify things he's put together um some stuff for his drivers in his home area in virginia but also looking at getting to some other national caliber shows throughout uh, the 2019 season so we'll be hitting on that with him plus we'll be hitting on whatever else comes up in the interim so again uh going to be off on that final monday i'll give you the date on it real quick while we got it right here going to be off on the 26th uh, with the plans of returning on the third with another edition of crash course that will be number 253 if i'm not mistaken but uh all things considered everybody have a great thanksgiving enjoy your time off all the hunters continue to be safe out there know what you're shooting at know what you're shooting at know what you're shooting at know where you are and know what you're shooting at be safe uh and best of luck to everybody hope you bring home a monster we'll see everybody again in two weeks that's going to do it for this edition of the crash course see you then Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who hosts Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at SmashItDerby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at StirringDirtRacing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FingerLinks1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York.